Hello guys, this is a getting started guide of the Software One Marketplace platform. I'm your host Max and I will try to make this video short and uh, to the point. I will try to explain what Software One does and uh, what is the Software One Marketplace platform. But before we go there, let's make sure that we understand the business problem uh, that we're trying to solve. And the business problem essentially was created by Salesforce when they launched uh, the first uh, major SaaS application back in 2000 or 1999. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember precisely. And uh, since then, the number of SaaS applications uh, has been steadily growing. Uh, and um, as of right now, um, it's 2024 20, today when I'm recording this video. The average number of SaaS applications that uh, an enterprise consumes uh, is somewhere around 150, 160. It's a huge number. And um, as you can imagine, um, it creates uh, a lot of complexity for companies uh, and people in those companies that are trying to procure that software because they need to establish those relationships with those vendors, manage billing, uh, renewals, all of that is actually quite complicated. And uh, Software One uh, is on a mission to simplify that process for our clients, companies. Uh, and we do that by uh, managing that relationship with vendors, um, by building this digital business network that connects uh, our clients with vendors in a uniform way. We provide the standardized billing capabilities, uniform procurement processes, uh, centralized vendor management, and a lot of other cool things. But all of that is powered by our platform. So if you are watching this video, most likely you want to understand what that platform does. And I'll be happy to explain it to you, but first we need to make sure that we speak the same language because unfortunately, uh, there is no common language for actors in our platform. So uh, let's define those. First of all, uh, we have our vendors, uh, those that we procure products from. We have our clients, those companies, enterprises that we're working with. Uh, in addition to that, we work with partners uh, who help us to work with certain clients that uh, they can serve better than ourselves. Um, we also work with distributors to be able to procure software in cases when we are not able to establish direct relationship with vendors for whatever reason. And of course, we have a relationship with developers and system integrators who help to build integrations on all layers of this uh, business network. So the names that we're using for those actors are just to reiterate vendors on the left, uh, distributors on the top left, um, our own uh, software and associates that administer the network, our partners, our clients, and of course, developers and system, system integrators. Those are six uh, primary actors and uh, terms that we use a lot across our documentation. So um, when you see them, don't be surprised because again, depending on where you're coming from, um, those names, uh, those terms could mean different things. Apologies, that's the nature of our industry. So uh, our platform is essentially uh, a SaaS application itself with public API and uh, three different user interfaces. Well, of course, technically it's the same user interface but different accounts, um, even though it just makes it much easier for us to explain things. So we're saying different user interfaces. We call them vendor portal, client portal, and operations portal. Um, as their name suggests, vendor portal is used by our vendors client portal is by our clients uh, and partners uh, and operations portal is used by our own associates. Um, all of those functions are built on top of our public uh, API and SDK. So every function that exists in our platform uh, could be automated by our developers and system integrators through SDK that we provide. So essentially we have UI, we have documentation and just to I explain to you how our platform looks like and to show it to you, let's take a look at our portal, at the client portal, of course, to start with, um, because this is uh, the value that our clients are um, uh, extracting from the platform. So uh, when you look at the uh, simple client account, like this one that I set up for demo purposes, the main navigation menu in the top left, so you can click on that, 
And this is where you will see all the modules that enable for your account. This account is super simple. I only have uh, our marketplace. Um, uh, things might get very complex, of course, uh, for bigger accounts and we have much more modules like cloud spend optimization and all of that. However, this is where you can manage your account settings. Yeah, all those buyers and tokens and licenses. I will explain what those are right now. Probably it's a mystery to you what that even mean. And this is where you can access all the marketplace capabilities, where you can see your agreements, uh, where you can see your orders, uh, products that are available to you and all that. In addition to that, in the top right corner, there's another very important menu. This is where you can see your profile information. This is where you can see account selector. If you happen to be a member of more than one account, we will discuss that in a second. Don't be uh, um, scared. All right. Uh, this brings us to the question of accounts, users, and groups in our platform. Just to make sure that, again, we speak the same language because our industry is a bit crazy. Account in every different system means something, something else. So in our platform, we define account uh, as uh, this object that is a logical container that represents a company or organization. So essentially, a software one will be an account. Uh, Adobe will be an account, Microsoft will be an account in our platform. And uh, users are those interactive actors who actually sign into our platform and uh, have access to one or multiple accounts and perform certain actions. Very simple. Then uh, we have users, we have accounts. Um, account might include multiple users and uh, users might belong to more than one account. In between account and user, we manage permissions uh, that users get through an object that is called group or user group. Um, this is a collection of permissions that are grouped together and then users are assigned to that group. And users might be members of more than one group. And um, uh, essentially, this is how users get their permissions in the scope of certain account. So those are three objects that we need to remember to understand uh, the language of our platform, uh, user, group, account. Hopefully it's simple enough. This brings us to a few extra objects that uh, we need to know in order to perform certain actions in the platform. Uh, those are sellers, buyers, and licenses. Okay, let's start with the sellers. So software one uh, is a network. Um, but those, that network is actually based on actual countries of Software One where we operate, uh, which means legal entities of Software One. Uh, and seller is an object on our platform that represents that legal entity. We have almost 100 of those entities across the globe, um, uh, basically covering the whole world. And uh, seller, uh, an example of the seller will be a Software One United States entity or Canada or Germany. And uh, then our clients work with us through one of those entities or, or multiple entities, so all of them in the extreme cases. And before uh, our clients can actually uh, perform any action, they need to be onboarded, uh, which means that uh, they need to define their entity structure. And this is where they need to define their buyers. And buyers are entities that uh, engage in commercial activities with our sellers. And on top of that, uh, our clients also need to define licensees. Those are entities that actually consume the services. Of course, in the simplistic case of uh, SMB, a buyer and licensee will be the same entity, um, super simple. But for complex big enterprises, um, uh, we have uh, clients with hundreds of legal entities. It's more complex than that. Uh, we would have a buyer uh, that then procures software for dozens, if not hundreds of uh, other legal entities. And this is how we structure that relationship. Uh, we have buyer that essentially procures software, licenses that consume software. And then this brings us to a very important object called agreement. Uh, agreement in our platform is the way to link the world of software one uh, with the world of the client. So uh, agreement is the object that uh, links seller of software one on the left with buyer and licensee uh, objects of a client. So agreement is a context in which transactions occur. This is where 
orders are actually being placed. So uh, we will get to orders and subscriptions uh, because that's exactly the topic uh, that we need to discuss next. Orders and subscriptions. So when we look at this diagram, this is already almost the entirety of our platform, at least at the high level. Um, uh, we need to understand that order uh, in our platform is a very important object. It represents a business transaction, which always happens in the scope of a given agreement. Uh, we support different order types. Uh, at, uh, at this level of abstraction that we're discussing right now, we need to know that those could be purchase orders, change orders, and termination orders. Um, as name suggests, uh, purchase orders this is, uh, are used to establish the new agreement. Change orders, they modify agreements or subscriptions and termination. Well, uh, you guessed it, they terminate things. And um, uh, on the other side uh, of uh, this diagram, we have subscriptions. Subscription in our platform is an object that represents um, provision of a service over a period of time. Um, well, quite obvious, uh, there could be multiple subscriptions in the same agreement. And the only way uh, subscriptions get modified in our platform are through orders. So an order is placed, whether it's purchase order, change order, or anything else. Um, as a result of processing of that order, subscriptions are being created, terminated, modified. So uh, transactional objects as orders, subscriptions represent the current state. Hopefully it's simple enough. So we're almost there. And uh, this brings us to the topic of products because we haven't uh, yet uh, defined products. And product in our platform is the object that's, def that's defined by vendor uh, in vendor portal, which is a separate topic uh, to be covered uh, in another training and uh, getting started for vendors. But uh, product in our platform is uh, defined as a solution or service offered by the vendor. It uh, consists of a lot of different attributes, but most importantly, items that are individual resource units, uh, SKUs, if you will, uh, available for provisioning, and parameters, uh, which are structured data defined by vendors uh, that need to be collected uh, in addition to, to just SKUs. So if we use an example of Dropbox, for example, uh, and we go to their website um, uh, and we see uh, this drop down of products, uh, this is essentially how uh, those products will be defined in our platform as well. Right? So in this example, we'll have most likely eight products if we were to define everything that Dropbox has uh, for sale in our platform. Um, so uh, product is this top level thing uh, which consists of a lot of items that then to be selected, like essentials, business, essential monthly, essential yearly, uh, and parameters that need to be collected, like domain names, etc. Hopefully simple enough. So we have product uh, defined in the scope of the vendor, items, parameters. And uh, obviously, uh, those products are then somehow linked to the world of Software One to be available for our clients. The way it happens is, well, first of all, uh, vendors define their price lists. Um, for different regions, different vendors handle that very differently. And uh, this is the value that we provide with uniform access to pricing information for vendors across different regions. And then those price lists are obviously linked uh, to specific sellers. And uh, this is where we uh, maintain another process and business object in our platform called listing. So listing is the object that uh, our staff establishes after reviewing the product um, that links together the product price list uh, with the seller and in turn uh, this product becomes available for our clients and with this we've just uh, explained the whole plot platform obviously there are way more objects than that there are api tokens and uh, and uh, a lot of other things that invoices that we will discuss uh, further but this is the basics Right, and uh, this defines uh, the logical model of Software One Marketplace platform. So we have three types of accounts to reiterate vendor, operations, and client. Uh, vendors define the product structure. Operations uh, make those products available to our clients, and uh, our clients establish uh, agreements um, uh, to procure those products uh, in the legal structure of our clients, and then place orders and maintain subscriptions. As simple as that. 
uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was uh, informative and entertaining. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, this will motivate us to produce more content and uh, uh, bring more fun and value to your lives. Thank you very much, guys, and have a wonderful day.